Hello, hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. Cool. Sorry I was late. I um I've been traveling for work all week and then I turned my computer on and like crazy things were happening as well. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like what technology, man. You know, you gotta love it, gotta hate it sometimes. <laughs> Seriously. And my house is really loud right now too. Like kids are bouncing off walls and all over the place. Um so just put that out there if you hear some screaming. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but um, Autumn, gar- how do you say it? I'm going to say guard. Am I saying it right? Yep. You are saying it correctly. Autumn yeah. guard. It is finally nice to meet you. I've been following you on Instagram for a while. So thanks for taking the time to come hang out with me for a little bit. Yeah, of course. I, I like what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, it seems to be, it seems to be going well. Um, I just like I I tell everyone it's like a passion project because I just feel like it's something like I'd like to see so that's why I started it and um yeah so and people seem to be digging it and just gonna keep going every Monday is when I've been releasing and just gonna keep going and it's cool for me like I like meeting new people so it's just a fun way to just like meet new people and it's technology is so easy to do that nowadays like for my job yes. um I work for a software company and everyone you know there's a lot of remote people and so we're on blue jeans which is another type of system sort of like zoom where it's um video conferencing so I'm on video conferences with people all day long about business stuff and so it's nice I was like why am I not doing this like with music stuff like it'd be cool yeah that's awesome <laughs> Um, so if, tell, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. I'm going to put all your links below to like Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, <laughs> like all of that. But if you could just, you know, tell us sort of who you are and what you're doing, what's your thing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Sure. Sure. It's funny that you say like a passion project kind of thing. Cause I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm like, um, I make music, I write, I sing I write my own songs, play my own instruments, and I produce all my music. I'm pretty much like a DIY like artist. And it's like it's it's like hard for me to even say like artists and stuff because it's like really I'm doing this as a hobby. I'm not doing it like um full time yet. I mean that's the goal, obviously. <laughs> but um yeah, I just um I make music. I started off with kind of just doing like acoustic songs with just a guitar and just writing lyrics and singing and then sure enough music production I just like I got super into it and just like having like full control of being able to like make music when you want where Mm -hmm. you want and not having to rely on other people like yeah I I had to get into music production (laughs) so yeah it's a little about me so, I mean, when did, did you like start playing instruments when you were like younger? Uh, I mean, or. Yeah. So, um, so actually like when I first, first started, um, I mean, I first started off with just like singing, like, um, I would just write a bunch of like songs on like my notebooks, like in middle school, mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of like paying attention to class, which is probably really bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then um my dad got me uh, my first guitar and I took I think I took like two lessons and then I just started really like learning on my own with uh I think it was I think it's ultimate guitar tabs.com I don't know if you're familiar with that website I am I have yes. gone and searched for different tabs for various songs yep <laughs> yeah exactly so kind of learned a little there but I would say um oh and then I forgot to add this part I did take um like a couple of piano lessons when I was a kid too so I knew a little bit about piano right um as well so those are like the two instruments that I started off with like a little bit of piano a little bit of guitar okay and so like put it I'm, I'm trying to get a timeline perspective here so oh, oh, in when? terms of you, <laughs> yeah yeah I mean like I yeah. like so you've been playing for a while I mean like music has been your thing for for a pretty long time yeah yeah I would say like um honestly like it started off when I was like really young so I would say like I don't know like when I was like 10 or something I like started like writing right and then throughout the years playing like picking up a guitar picking up piano and it wasn't until 2012 where I went to a 
like I went to a show that um, Daedalus was headlining. Mark Redito was there um, at the time. His name was Spaz Kid. Um, and then Goodnight Cody was there at the time. His name was um, Snorlax. I went to this show that was like my first, um, I guess, like music production focused show where it was just like um, someone up there with just like a bunch of gear uh-huh. just doing everything. You know, it wasn't like a like a full on band. It was just like one person making beats and like the crowd like going crazy. So that was when I first decided like, oh, I want to do I want to get into music production, you know? Okay. And I would say, and then it took me like a few years after that to like really actually start with like music production just because I was already kind of making music with somebody else. But um, once again, not wanting to like rely on somebody else to like be there to make music because I want to make music whenever I want to make music, you know? (laughs) Um, So it was like my last year of college it was I want to say I think it was like 2016 early 2016 I was decide I just decided to like look into like music production courses because I had like a free membership to lynda.com which is like oh so good (laughs) (laughs) yes exactly addictive for those of us that like learning yes exactly so I mean lynda.com like they just like have like a bunch of courses um and I was supposed to use it for my graphic design class at the time because I needed to like brush up on some skills and I didn't really I mean I wasn't passionate about graphic design so I was like you know I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna see if there's like music production courses on here so I kind of checked that out and sure enough there was like Ableton courses and I was like holy crap (laughs) what is Ableton um so I just kind of like got into it and I mean that's when I first like really learned like okay like how to use MIDI clips like how to what's the difference between like session view and arrangement view and that was like when I first was like whoa I I think I can I think I can get into music production this was like 2016 like early 2016 um and that kind of also made me made me decide not to double major I was supposed to be a double major with uh advertising and and graphic design I was like screw that I'm done with my first major I don't want to do graphic design I just gonna learn some music production okay (laughs) yeah that is that's awesome I mean that's a good that's like so Ableton, I mean, I know, so I've seen you use Ableton, like literally that, that's how you chose Ableton. Like you, you were like, Here, here's Ableton on Linda. Wow, this yep. is going to do. I'm going, I'm going to go the Ableton route. I mean, it's a great choice, <laughs> but. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I mean, Ableton was the first, it wasn't the first dot that I started with. Like, okay. I think I, I had tried to learn FL Studio, like maybe like a couple of years ago, but I didn't really try. Like, I kind of just, like, had the FL Studio, like, the DAW, and I was just, like, kind of messing around with it, and I was like, oh, this is too hard. But Ableton was the first DAW that I was like, holy crap, like, I get this. Like, this makes sense to me, <laughs> you know? Isn't that an amazing feeling? Because I, 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 um, I've been there, like, I've, I've tried so many DAWs, like, through, I mean, going back to, like, 2000. <laughs> Yeah. where I can get like I mean where it was like what you're saying like you know you just use it you, you get it you use it you're like oh, okay right. but it's like you just like sort of hit this place where you just stop and mm-hmm. when you stop you're I mean that's pretty much it you're not gaining any more knowledge or momentum in fulfilling your desire to make music but then that right. time when you like keep going like you you're using whatever like Ableton and you just keep going and it's just this is crazy because I think like so many people it's hard like you just stop now back in 2000 there were so many reasons why I stopped because the technology just isn't where it is today and even Ableton I mean I probably started Ableton on like I don't I didn't hop into Ableton like way back right away so it might have been like Ableton five or six I came in on Hmm. but like Ableton as itself has come so far um especially for music production because when I a lot of times when I was using Ableton it was for like for DJing and like the warp the, the strongest thing about Ableton was like it's warpability like no one no other yes. software had that type of warping 
ability at the time. So when you were doing like uh, putting mixes together, it was just so nice to just put all your warp markers in and just be able to drop stuff in um, for yeah. mixed tools because that gets time consuming. But um, yeah, so I totally hear you when you're like, you just kept going with Ableton and here you are yeah, years later. Absolutely. And you're rocking it. I mean, I'm, I, I'm just, I feel like I'm just getting started, but like, but even like with like, um, like how you mentioned it was like back in the day with like how Ableton was, I mean, not only, um, it's not how it was today or how it is today, but like, there's just so much information out there with like, anyone can learn anything like with like YouTube, like, I don't know, you Demi, like there's just so much information out there that like, yeah, there's, there's no excuse for like, if you want to learn something, like you can learn it. Yeah, and uh, because, like, back then, like, you had to go to, like, the boards, like, <clears throat> all the message boards, and it took time trying yeah. to find the answer to your question, or just, like, hoping somebody was actually going to answer your question, um, because there were a lot of, like, secrets people kept and, you know, didn't sort of wanted to keep that club closed, like, not so that, no, you know, not too many Whoa. people knew how to do <laughs> what they knew yes. how to do so different now so different. yeah that is then that is the other thing that has really helped me um for sure I mean YouTube is is absolutely amazing and the people who are so giving with you know their time and their knowledge and mm -hmm. just sharing what has got them like to their successes um you know which is amazing and of course they're doing it because they're you know making money from doing that as well but yeah. <laughs> whole nother story but I do feel like people mm -hmm. are just more giving overall right yeah um, absolutely so like you're you're pretty active like twitch seems to be where you're very active lately um like how's that going like I know for a lot of people twitch is like this new concept even though it's been around for years yeah but that for the music industry, it's just like this past few years, I guess there's been a lot of momentum that's been building and more and more people are hopping on there. So like, um, what are your thoughts on being on Twitch and how you're using it and performing? Oh man, I love Twitch. Like, dude, Twitch is, it's so different. It's just like, it's such a different thing. Like, um, I would, like, I always like describe it when people ask me like, well, what's Twitch? Like what will, or what do you do on Twitch? Cause a lot of people know it for the, like for gaming. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I tell people like, yeah, there's like a music section on Twitch, they're like, what? Um, I always kind of describe it. I describe it as like, well, like, I don't know, but like pretend you go to like a, like, it's like if you're doing an open mic, Yeah. but, but you're at your house, you don't so have to cool. like, yeah, you don't have to drive somewhere. You don't you don't only get one song. A lot of these open mics, you, you only get like a couple songs. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's like an open mic whenever you want. It's your own show, like playing music whenever you want. It's like, holy crap, dude. It's, it's just yeah. completely like changing things, you know? And it's just, um, I love it. I like, I feel like you just get such a deeper connection like with your viewers too. It's, there's, there's nothing like it in my opinion right now. <laughs> I'm getting like goosebumps because like, what, I mean, what you said, like, it's just, um, it's just changing the way that people share music together. Uh, mm -hmm. and ex everything you said is exactly when I hop on there into the music areas, like how I feel like as, um, as somebody who's enjoying the music, like in my home, right. like, oh my God, like I can go and I can, you know, listen to all these different kinds of music and, it's live and I'm sitting here in my own home in my living room, like enjoying yes. it. Yes. Like yeah. yes. So on the other side of it, it's really cool. What, um, it, it, so one of the things you said is like really interesting to me because I'm, it's what I'm trying to like figure out. Like you say, you said that, so you feel like you have like a closer connection to the people who are there watching you. And it, do you feel like that's just through the chat and like the things people are saying, or I'm just curious, curious what like, yeah, what what made you say that or how you how does it feel that way? Oh, okay. So honestly, like um just compared to other platforms. So like for example, like on YouTube, um right now I'm like I just post videos and then like people will comment, right? And yeah. then um I'll I'll try to get back to the comment like as soon as I can. Same thing with Instagram. Um but with Twitch, it's like it's like you're talking to people in real time and mm -hmm. I mean the conversations like go from like talking to music 
to like just like talking about like random stuff like hey like how was your day man like you know what I mean like the the connection with your viewers just gets so much more um like it's just it, on a deeper level just because it's like you're hanging out with them like a few times a week like right now I don't stream too often I stream about two times a week but still it's like I get to hang out with um like really like my twitch fam that's I, I like to call my twitch fam <laughs> and, <laughs> you know are you like so are you are you gaining momentum in the sense that um like as you like streaming twice a week like I think that's a lot person I mean I know there are people who are streaming like every day but yes a fair amount <laughs> like and do you like just pick up do people like you know just follow you and and then they're getting the alert every time you go live so you keep just picking those people up every week and so that's how you build your your fan base basically yeah I mean yeah I believe they get like notifications and stuff we also have like a discord a lot of uh, streamers have a discord okay. in where like they'll let they'll let people know like they're going live um you know twitter I'm like really bad about like using like twitter and stuff about telling people when I'm going live I need to I need to start doing that but like yeah, I would say, um, as far as, like, picking up, like, momentum goes, that really, honestly, just, it's kind of, like, really depends on, like, your content. Like, are you constantly, like, trying to improve your content? Are you streaming the days that you're, that you say you're going to be streaming? Um, are you on time to your streams? Like, there's a lot that kind of depends on it, but I would say, like, um, just making sure, like, that you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in my case like I love streaming it's so much fun like I'm not gonna stop like it's it's super fun um that really helps <laughs> oh yeah yeah I, absolutely I was um so I was DJing like I was trying to do like every Friday night DJing but then I was having issues with like drop frames and um so it just I don't know it just sort of got it I was really frustrated and I stopped but I want to get I want to get back to doing it but as as DJing it always felt like, especially on Friday nights, like it was just hard because there are, there are just like a lot of people. So I, my, my sense in doing my research is just like what you were saying is like the consistency. So like, if you're going to do it every Friday, you do it every Friday, you know, or yep. whatever, you know, that you just keep coming back, um, you know, so that you're just the visibility and the people going to follow you and, and all that. So, right. I need to get back with it. I mean, it was yeah. fun. <laughs> it was absolutely fun, but, uh, and especially for DJing because you can't do that anywhere else in the sense that, um, like YouTube, um, it's a pain in the butt. You can find out what songs aren't, um, uh, restricted so that you can put them on your YouTube mix or whatever and not mm -hmm. get flagged or get, you know, a like totally taking your your content taken down but on yes. Twitch, there's like nothing um there's there's nothing to stop you when you're live live streaming like if it's you know some t in terms of content wise there are logarithms or whatever the case is you know there's nobody there that's playing police like cutting off your stream right. because you're playing i don't know a madonna song and madonna doesn't want her stuff like stream yeah so it's good Absolutely. for for deep for DJing I don't know how long it's going to be that way but and that's why I sort of feel like oh I have to go get back on I have to get back yeah, on yeah you should and honestly like um it's like when you first first get into Twitch I'm not gonna lie it's, it's like hard like you stream for like I remember streaming for like zero viewers for like forever you know what I mean like it's it's like hard at first um but if you stick to it I mean like you're people are gonna find you and you're, you're gonna grow you know what um, kept you going when you so when you had the the zero or the one or the two, you know people hopping in your room hopping out <laughs> like what is it that kept you just like focused and, and going um I would say um well first number one is I just love playing music I'm I would be doing this whether I was streaming right like like on like online or offline like I, I love playing music like it's fun it's like an, it's very easy and convenient to like, like do it from home um and then number two um I, I feel like with twitch especially I mean you could see this with like all platforms but mm -hmm. like with twitch especially it's not even for me it's like not even about like how many viewers it's about like the quality of those viewers if that makes sense right. so you could have like you could have like four viewers but like 
those four viewers, like they're freaking loyal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, coming into your stream, um, and just, I don't know, honestly, I like, it, I think it just comes down to like, lo like loving it. And Hey, I would do this like regardless of like getting to, uh, two viewers or zero viewers. Um, I don't know. That's, that's probably like what kept me going, <laughs> honestly. That's good. That's like, I mean, I just, cause I know that some of us sometimes feel like stuck, right? Like, Oh yeah, for so, sure. So I was just wondering, you know, what, yeah, what kept you going, but it's true. It's like when you're really passionate about doing something and you know, like you're saying, you're going to do it, whether you've got the camera on or not. So why not have the camera on so that you can share that with somebody? Um, like, yeah, that's totally cool. It's really awesome. What are, let's talk some gear stuff now. Um, so use Ableton. So is there like, what do you, a VST or, or something in effect, something that you're digging right now that you just can't stop using? Okay. Let me see. You said gear or a well, it could be either. It could be so we could you could either do gear or you could do like something like a VST. Okay, or... okay. I'll I'll talk to you about a piece of gear. Okay. <laughs> that I'm like super into right now. Um my mini nova synthesizer. Um I freaking love it. I've been making videos of like my process of like making songs and stuff with it recently. Um and it's just like there's just like so much you could do with it like there's like these uh there's these buttons on like the lower or like the upper or, like right lower right whatever um that you could use like to animate each sounds which pretty much is like like you you can play a sound and then you can like press a button gives it like a whole different effect and you can like put a bunch of effects on like one sound and it's, it's super freaking cool and the crazy part is it was collecting dust for like years <laughs> Like, I didn't use it for a really long time. Like, I'm going to be real with you. Like, I bought that thing, and I didn't, like, I never made a song with it. Like, I think I, like, played with it a couple times and was, like, you know, just, like, messing around with it. But I never recorded a song with it for years. And I was even, I was actually considering selling it for a while because I wasn't using it. Um, and then, thankfully, I didn't sell it. Um honestly after like getting the knowledge of like music production like how to record on Ableton that's like what saved saved okay. me from parting with my <laughs> mini Nova synthesizer and yeah I would say that's my favorite piece of gear right now love that's it awesome. that's a good story because I think we're all like I know I'm so quick to buy gear and like it does take time to dig into something you know when you buy something new um so like I bought the Akai Force um so was so excited about it i was like pre-ordered it it came i opened it i turned it on and i was like oh oh man like, <laughs> I, like, I was just like, like it's just not as straightforward as i thought it was gonna yes. be and i turned to the manual and i was like oh my god i don't have time for this like and because i just feel like i'm at the point i was like in this place where i was using machine a lot and i was just making music and it was like so fun because i felt like i didn't have these barriers and i was making all these songs and then i got this new piece of gear and i was like uh roadblock again <laughs> which and it was you know it's like it is awesome don't get me wrong but i really don't know how to use the thing um i spent a few hours with it and i just haven't had the time to dig in um so i get it and i i think in my head i'm thinking it's not like I know, like, I'm not going to sell it because I want to use it and it is going to be awesome. I just have to figure out, like, get to that place where, you know, I have the time to put into learning how to use it or I'm ready for it. Maybe I'm just not ready for it because I've really been loving the simplicity of machine and um, thought I, I, and when I had first started with machine, I hated it too. I hated it because it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a linear DAW and I'm just like, Oh my God, I got to make this in here. And then I have to export it and then like lay it out in Ableton or whatever. And then I just yes. sort of figured out how to work within machine. And yes, there are some limitations, some of which I tried to get around inside machine, but it's so much more pleasant just staying inside machine. Um, anyway, <laughs> point of that is that like what you're saying, I mean, it's true. It's like, you're just not always in the right place for for that piece of gear but it doesn't mean you should get rid of it 
So. I feel like it it hap- I feel like that happens more often than like people like to admit, you know, oh, like yeah. <laughs> but I'm you sure. just gotta like you just gotta not give up on yourself, you know, not give up on your gear, you know. Um at like at this at the same time though, if you know like there's like a piece of gear that's not meant for you, um then it's like yeah. okay to part with it. But don't give up on it just for the sake of like, oh, I don't like I don't know how to do this. Like, you know, try it out. Yeah. Give give it give it a chance. <laughs> That's, it's just, uh, it, it is, it's like sticking with something. Cause a lot of us just want to like, um, just quit. You know, once it gets too hard, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, like, you just like, no, but it's like when you said like, you know, figuring out the different ins and outs of Ableton and then now being able to, to use that scent. That's, that's cool. Mm-hmm. What's your dream piece of gear? Like, do you have, is there something you're just like, oh my God, I wish I could get X, Y, Z, but it's like $10,000. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Dream piece of gear, dude. Oh man. Honestly, man, I don't even know. Dream piece of gear. Or maybe probably... not even total dream piece. Just something you know that you really want, but you can't right now, yeah. tomorrow. You can't, you know, like okay. the next year thing. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, let me see here. So yeah, I, I kind of have like two answers for that. Um, the Ableton push. Okay. <laughs> Ableton sponsor, just saying. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Reach out yeah, for that, that one. Uh, I know, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Ableton push. It's like, it's pretty expensive, but it, it just looks so, looks so awesome for performing. And like, just like the fact that it's like made for Ableton, just yeah. like, uh, it's, that's like a huge draw. Um, I would say another piece of gear. Um, and this is actually something that I saw at a music production school called Beat Lab Academy. It's called a, the Prophet Synthesizer. Oh, yes. Yeah, that Prophet. one's pretty pricey too, but I yes. would love to get my hands on that piece. Yeah. Do you ever use like the fake fake the, the not the 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 digital ver- the software version of, of the prophet which is um artoria has one like artoria. no i don't i, I but, should though i should i should look into that yeah they say it's the next best best thing i, I mean i i mean obviously it's not different than having your hands like on like heart you know analog gear but yeah there's something there's something about that like i kind of talked about that um like when I made my first video on my mini Nova, there's mm-hmm. just like stuff, there's something different about like, like feeling like your, your gear, you know what I mean? Instead of like on the doll, like there's just something different about it. Not saying that it's better or worse or anything. It's just different, you know? Yeah. I can't explain it. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, it, it's like anything. It's, um, it just gives you a whole different experience. Like, I think like yes. being able to be tactile with anything, um, just, just changes the whole experience and I think a lot of us are yearning that because things have become so digitized that Mm -hmm. um you know look at like they like even photography like there was this huge like several years ago this huge push back into film you know because people Mm -hmm. were just like fed up with like digital and you forget this is the same thing is true for music and I always say this you forget like so for photography digital like the um digital came a, a, a long way and you know mm-hmm. you could take a photo photograph with a digital camera and it looks really great but then you go back and you look at like a medium format film camera and all the detail and dynamics that you get in that picture and compare it and you're like holy yeah. crap film is so much better why did people why are people using digital and it's because it's a lot <laughs> easier but it's the same thing like analog right you hear like you know with analog gear like you hear this the, these sounds these tones the depth the the different elements Mm -hmm. that like you miss when once it gets digitized and you know like again like if there's a digital version of a synth like yeah it sounds great but it's not going to sound like the analog version so right yeah um, those those are really good comparison (laughs) yeah I did photography a lot for a long time and so I mean really deep in the trenches in photography and it's interesting when you get to be my age because you start to you see things repeat it's like this crazy thing like I I, it's amazing. Once you can say like, okay, I saw what happened in this industry. And then I like mm-hmm. see music production and I can compare now, like, and just see like they're going <laughs> this way. It's like wild. Um, but yeah. So nice. yeah, cool. That's fun. I'm, this is fun. This is 
everybody I've talked to, like, it's so, everyone's, like, in such a different place that it's so cool, like, talking to so many different people that are, like, doing music stuff, but, like, just doing different things. It's yeah, amazing. man, and, like, honestly, like, I'm, like, I'm in, like, my beginning stages, dude, like, mm-hmm. I, like, like, I work, you know, like, I work at a doctor's yeah. office, uh, I'm a nurse, no, I'm not a nurse, um, <laughs> but I just, um, yeah, like, I do music on the side, just, for fun but I want to do more of it like I'm definitely in like the beginning stages of like my music journey so what's Um, your goal what are your goals like where do you like where do you want to go like okay like five years out like what would be like your your place that you'd really like to be with with your music tough question I know (laughs) no that's a good that's a really good question where I would want to be at with my music definitely would like to do it I would like to be doing it full time. So like my main focus, (laughs) Um, I would like to be in a place where I can, um, honestly, where I can kind of like just do more of like what I'm already doing. So right now, like I post like a video on YouTube, like maybe once every few weeks, Uh it'd be, it'd be cool to do like, it'd be cool to do like YouTube, like three times a week. It'd be, cool to do twitch you know maybe three to four times a week it'd be cool to just like be constantly putting out content just to like to reach to reach more people with music i mean that's at the end of the day i think every musician like at the end of the day the goal is to reach as many people as possible with your music you know so yeah that would be amazing if i could get to that like in five years just like fully focusing on that's a, that's a good goal that that mm-hmm. that's awesome what um do you have do you have you put out an album as of yet of your music like that on spotify or yeah so or? um so no album technically yet um i'm like i put out this thing called the demos like it sounds kind of oh, cool sounds, sounds kind of weird but um i didn't want to put out like an ep i didn't want to put out like a like anything like official but on Twitch, I wanted to do like a giveaway, like kind of like a CD giveaway. Okay. So I made this thing called the demos. I think I actually have one right here. <laughs> I have one right here. Oh, so that's I literally, cool. yeah, I made this like myself. Like it's like it's super freaking DIY. Um, but um, basically, there's like only 25 of them. And Ooh, you're um, onto something I, there, no? <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah, there's only like 25 of them. I'm like honestly not even like uh promoting it on any other platform besides like twitch like you can get it like on twitch you know what i mean but like that's like the closest thing i've come out to like putting out like a project you know what i mean but once again it's more so like for my viewers just to kind of have something that's like hey there's only 25 of these like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um but it'd be cool to maybe um have like a you know it's funny when you say album like I know artists do that, but I'm just like EP. I'm kind of like, yeah, like I don't know, like I'm kind of like, it's like, do people still like buy that stuff? You know what I mean? Like full on. Well, I I met I meant for like uh, streaming, like because on I mean I just met on Spotify. I should have been like more, oh for stream streaming. Um, yeah, yeah, just because that's like another you know uh, stream of buying yeah, for income sure. for people. So I mean, although it takes a ton of streams to get there I was just wondering if that was something you were playing around into oh yeah definitely I mean um I think I have like three songs on Spotify right now and um I'm I just need to get better at like finishing more songs yeah so I wouldn't say it's like an album but I'm definitely like working on putting out like more uh singles I guess if you will do you feel like you said you said finishing songs so god isn't it hard to finish things (laughs) dude (laughs) um like i've made a new rule for myself like i'm not allowed to start a new song until i've finished like the last one like that's my new rule for myself because it's like (laughs) you know like you'll you'll be working on a song and then like i don't know you'll kind of get like tired or you get stuck right so then you're like "I'm, i'm just gonna work on a new project and then you make the new project and it's like oh this is so much better than what i was working on before I want to work on this now, you know, and it's just like a kind of like a, just a vicious cycle. 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you like so much, but, but when I do, so when I push myself to finish the songs, like that is the most benefit I've, I've gotten, like getting that mm-hmm. like final finished version. So, and I think I started realizing that. So like, I just, I'm trying, I'm just trying to finish things. Um, right. No, and then like just the feeling of okay that's done all right like yes. it's true sometimes absolutely sometimes like you're like oh god this like new you know sketch I did is like so much better than this other one but it's so right. tough because we're like our worst critics like I feel like and yeah. and that is what in and of itself just becomes a blocker for producing and just getting music out there it's just, you, you know, your yourself. Um, yeah. And I don't know if that's ever going to go away, honestly. Like, just being your own worst critic. Like, I don't know if that ever goes away. Like, yeah. um, but you just have to kind of, like, I don't know. Like, if you love to do it, like, there's no reason to stop, you know? Like, who cares, like, what people think? I mean, like, care care what people think, but, like, not in not to the extent where it stops you from doing something that you love to do absolutely yeah that's good on that have you felt like so as a woman in the music industry producing making your own music following this journey i mean is there i mean how do you have any advice for other women anything that you think i don't know maybe you you've learned a little tidbit that you think would be helpful for somebody or something that motivates you to keep going, even though you feel like, I don't know, there's just so many, so many men in this game. <laughs> um, let me see here. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been really like blessed that like, you know, yeah, you're right. There are a lot of men in this game for sure. I've been really blessed that every producer that every male producer that I've met thus far has been really awesome. Um, and really like encouraging, like when, you know, it's like I find that like when people like when I am the only like girl producer in the room people are like oh like you know like like they're like almost like more encouraging because of it yeah. so that's that's kind of cool I know it's not the, ex- the same experience for everybody like um but I would say just like if this is something that you love to do like don't let anybody like stop you don't let anything stop you like you know because at the end of the day there are going to be people that are supportive of what you do and those people um I I don't know I just like it's important to know that those people do exist like people are going to be supportive for you there's always going to be haters like no matter what like no matter if you're a girl even like if you're a guy like there's going to be haters no matter what like oh your music sucks or you're not good enough they're gonna there's gonna be that like no matter what just if you love it just keep going you know I am those are all that's like awesome though that Yes, absolutely. I just watched, so on one of my plane rides, I watched um, On the Basis of Sex, which is, um, was really, really good. So it's about the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and uh, some of her cases. And anyway, it was awesome. Um, and yeah, it is. It's true. It's like, th- there are haters for, for everybody. And there's haters everywhere that hate mm-hmm. you know, pink, purple, man, woman, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah just keep going I mean that's it's such a good point um because I think that some of us just become overly sensitive to somebody saying something about you know something that's so deep to our heart and some you know like one comment on like a YouTube video um could just shoot somebody down to the point where they just stop you know and it and it is it's sad uh I always say like because I've done a few of these now like I'm old enough like to be at the point where I just don't care anymore, which is a really good, really good place to be. But 20 years ago, that's not where I was. Um, You know, I I think, you know, it was definitely harder like 20 years ago to be a woman, like doing music, doing guitar, whatever. And so from what you said, and it is so positive and I just really want to like, make sure we emphasize this is I also feel that the times are really changing. Um, in so many ways for women, but especially in music. Um, And Mm -hmm. I know we hear like so much chatter with like the past Grammys and stuff, and it's still women only represent this percentage or this percentage, but the vibe from like men 
is it's a great one because they're my channel in its of itself i have like 98 percent are my viewers are men and i hear i see so many positive comments so mm -hmm. i feel like we're just really making headway so it just it feels like times are definitely different so it's great to hear that you've like had a lot of positive situations yeah and i mean there's no like i mean at the same time like i mean the way that i'm going about it like there's no gatekeeper for me like yeah. i produce i i produce my stuff i put my stuff out there's no like person making decisions for me it's like i'm putting it out to like the market you know what i mean like like that's what people like to call it i'm putting it out to the people yep and letting them decide so i think that's another thing that like technology has like really helped out with just like the fact that like we're we have more control now because of the internet oh yeah because of technology you know yeah yeah i think that has really really helped women i mean i know like you look at stories like chance the rapper story or you know some of some other folks who've gone you know been independent and i think that that same vibe though is like exactly what you're saying like there's no gatekeeper so yeah you can you know you can put your stuff out there and find your fans and keep pushing and so and it's just such an exciting time for the, all of these reasons to be making music. I think that um, I look forward to 10 years from now and just looking back and just like really seeing like, wow, that was like a crazy time. It's really, <laughs> yes. it's exciting. It's so exciting. And I'm just so excited to be here. Um, so I've like, I have this list of like questions I like to go through. We like hit on everything going through <laughs> here. So, yeah, no, it's awesome. It's really exciting. Um, the one thing that we didn't talk about though is um, like m the type of music. And uh, you mentioned some artists. So you did mention like some of the stuff you were listening to, like some of the music producers you saw. But like right now, like what, like what are you, what are you listening to? Like who are you jamming to? What's on your Spotify? Like who, what comes to okay. mind? yeah um okay so i'll name some artists that you probably know um Billie probably eilish. i probably don't but okay <laughs> oh, okay okay so um billy eilish super dope okay. um odessa um let me see i have to shout out some twitch uh music streamers there is a yeah for sure rant yeah there's this um streamer there's this music streamer named stephanie um dead stephanie d-e-d -E stephanie <laughs> and also known as random girl singing she just put an ep out right now completely crowdfunded by twitch there's like a twitch music drummer on there twitch music cellist on there it's just like <laughs> so freaking crazy like what you can accomplish like what music streamers could accomplish um so yeah random girl singing scene of action another music streamer absolutely amazing like when you go to his streams holy crap like it's like you're on a rock show there's so much energy there <laughs> but um i feel like i may have seen that one uh, yeah there's... he's so awesome okay cool yeah so say those <laughs> and what now your music like who are you inspired by do you who do am you... i inspired by yeah oh man i get ins i get inspired it's so funny because like I get inspired by music for sure, but sometimes I get inspired by like non-musical things, like weird. I don't know. Well, I guess I guess it's not that weird. People get inspired by like things that are happening in their life, right? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. This ha this this happened. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. not that weird. Like, oh, this happened. I just gotta kind of like express myself, kind of thing. But um, as far as like who um inspires me, I would say um, let me see here recently has been like a lot of like independent like musicians like um nicholas miguel is independent completely independent um a lot of like twitch music streamers just doing it all on their own um i you're will say oh i don't want to cut you oh, off oh no no oh, oh no go ahead. no i was just gonna say you're <laughs> like it's awesome to hear you saying like all these twitch musicians or streamers like i mean in and of itself like you saying that i mean just shows the shift right uh of of where things yeah. are changing they're just like independent artists you know independent artists in general like i mean like yeah like there's twitch music streamers there's just people that like i've found through like youtube on instagram just like that whole thing is inspiring to me because it's like people are taking control um yeah. 
yeah, that's, I would say, independent musicians, man. It's so cool because, like, I feel like when I was, like, 18, 20, and do, writing my own songs and performing in open mic nights in various places, like, I always felt like, in my head, I was always like, well, you know, like, I'm never going to make it big. Like, I just, I just sort of, like, felt like it was too hard for some, for somebody like me to ever, like, make it. I don't know why. I just, like, had this self-defeating, like, thought. And yeah, I, I get you. <laughs> back then, it was because it was like, okay, well, I have to get a record label. And I, mm-hmm. you know, how, how many people really get a record deal and this and that. And so it, I always was like, this is just a hobby. Um, but it's funny because now, like over 20 years later, here I still am. And I haven't been creating my, my own music in the sense of singing lyric stuff, but I'm mm-hmm. like seeing all this happen. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm having so much fun making music. I'm like, I need to start singing again. I need to start making my own freaking music because who knows, maybe like at age 43, I could get, I, you know, I could like, use Twitch, use, you know, be an independent yes. artist and I could make it big. Who knew? Yeah, and that's like, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing that's so crazy because it's like, um, holy crap. Like, um, like scene of action. Um, he, I believe he was doing like, what was he doing? Like he was, a, I want to say he was like an audio engineer or I'm probably getting that completely wrong, uh-huh. but he had like, he already had like a bunch of like music, like done like that. Like he just hadn't like, you know, like he had done shows before, but he just, he just thought like, okay, I'll, I'll be like, kind of like in the background kind of thing. Right. Um, and then Twitch came along and he's like, oh crap, like I can, I can like reach people with this platform. So it's almost as if like, if you just stick to what you love, like, um, I heard Gary Vaynerchuk say this, he said like the world comes to you, you know, I'm such a, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned him. I've been, a, I've been following him forever and ever and ever. Uh, it feels like, I mean, how long has it been? It's been well over 10 years. Um, oh, wow. but anyway, yeah, I've been with him since like a long time ago. Uh, awesome. yeah. And, but, but, but such a good sentiment. And one of the reasons I've continued to follow him and he's helped me like just traverse so many different things I've done creatively that um, have been successful and I've enjoyed is that it's like, just live your freaking life. You know, he wouldn't say yes. freaking, but I don't swear like him, but um, you know, like it, and, but it sounds like the easiest thing, right? Just follow what you're passionate about. Just do what you love. Just, you know, follow, just, just follow what feels right. It sounds so easy. Right. But this is what he always says. I mean, it, it's, people you just don't do it there's so many just blocks whether it's your parents whether it's what yeah you think society wants you to do or yeah. your fears or you know the unknown and um but yeah that's so there's so many good points and um and we look we just got there and we, I, it's it's been it's been almost an hour so <laughs> unfortunately i have to go <laughs> closer it might like my computer might like crash when it like yeah <laughs> this and, and saves it but um but yeah no like uh, I think that that is, that is so awesome to put out there, but it's, it's true. You just, it, it, and I've seen it firsthand because like, there are so many things I've done throughout my past 20 years where that I thought I couldn't do so long ago. Like I was a wedding photographer for a few years, like very successful wedding photographer. And I taught myself, like I found different photographers who I, you know, went into classes from and I bought the gear and I figured it all out myself and was very successful. And, um, you know, that was on the weekends while I worked as an attorney during the week, you know? So it's just like, mm-hmm. you just, you just have to just follow what, you know, follow the things you love doing and the universe does inevitably support you. But that, that yeah. trust in that, you know, the right thing that it's going to happen. I think people just don't really trust that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's, like, it's also just, like, work, you know, like, you gotta work, you gotta sacrifice, and, like, all this stuff, for sure, but, like, it doesn't hurt to, like, never, like, if you love to do something, like, just keep doing it, even if it's, like, a hobby, you know, just, like, keep at it, because you never know when, like, an opportunity might arise. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, where that switch, but, but just where it's, you know, you, you, that tilt, you know, you, it just, inevitably tilts to the other way where like okay wow this is this is could be my career now um yes. 
you know, so I, but I really respect, you know, people who like you are so much younger than me that have this amazing opportunity, like right out of the gates here. Um, Sounds like, you know, in college, you figured out, okay, this is what I want to do. And you're working and figuring out how to do the other piece so that you can make that tip as well and and do the things you love, which is so cool. Um, I'm talking a little too much, but um, I finished, I'm like half a, I'm halfway into my glass. Of hey, we're, we're having a conversation, man. This feels, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting is like so many, so many, I've talked to a few people so far and I'm like, Oh, we have to do this again. I feel like, uh, <laughs> like a rotating basis, yes. uh, but I just think there's just so much to talk about. And I think that, um, like this platform, like just, just being able to just talk about music, talk about stuff and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. So um, I, I will put all of your links below for everybody watching this right now. Everything, Sweet. Twitch. If you haven't been on Twitch before, anybody watching this, go check Twitch out. It's addictive. You'll find yourself laying in bed, going to sleep. And you're like, oh, <laughs> what's going on on Twitch? I mean, it's so true. Um, my wife, she's like, are you watching that Twitch again? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> And I tell, I'm like, look, this is a singer from wherever, you know, and, and she yeah. gets it. I think it's just that, um, as more and more people like discover it for live music, I think it's like going to be like tremendous. Um, yes. yeah. So, so I put everything below and thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday to chat with me and, and talk about what you're doing. And I wish you so much success in like your next your your one year goals and your five year goals and I'm sure you're gonna like totally like nail it because we'll, we'll see <laughs> well <laughs> yeah I've I've seen what you're doing and you obviously I mean it's something that you love and you're you're very um you just you're sticking with it you're like you said like having that schedule on twitch and like doing it and persevering and and just like just doing it that's it's awesome. I totally respect anyone like that because I know how hard it is like in my life to find time to do things. Right. So sticking to it like that, it's awesome. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. And mad respect to you for doing this. This is like, <laughs> this is super cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see more of this. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't know what's, I, I don't know what's coming. I'm always like, oh, so anyone who's watching this right now, just like hit me up, DM me. I've been D- I've, I DM'd you on Instagram. I'm like, I'm DMing people and, yep. um, you know, and it's interesting because not everyone's like, I mean, not everyone's into just like chatting, you know, hanging out in a, yeah. in a, in a, a video conference and chatting. Um, I thought right. it's so funny because I said this to somebody else, I thought it'd be easier than it was, but you know, some people are just like, yeah. And then it's like, you don't hear from them for a long time. So if that's what no, it's like if that's somebody here watching don't worry i'm coming after you i'm gonna be DMing <laughs> you again so <laughs> um but thank you so much have a great sunday and i will um like i said this is every monday so today we are sunday tomorrow we will we will this will go live and thanks for being a part of it yeah of course thanks for uh, having me on <laughs> all right take care bye all right you too bye